Hi, you've probably heard the term edge computing and you may have no idea about what it is and why it's actually involved in almost any aspect of our everyday lives. Today we will try to uncover the mystery of edge computing and try to get into its basics. Well, let's imagine that you are the lucky guy who drives a Tesla. Or you may actually is. And you obviously use all the handy features that Tesla offers to you. For example, the autopilot. A car is a piece of steel, plastic, resin and silicone that rushes at hundreds of miles per hour and it's a pretty dangerous thing and it has a tremendous amount of energy and can cause a lot of difficulties in the case of a road accident. The autopilot is a set of sensors, algorithms and computing capacity that continuously analyze the situation around the car at high rates and hundreds or even thousands of measurements per second. The incoming amount of data is large. The car may have thousands of sensors and overall data traffic may be measured in millions of events per second. And of course, each indication needs to be examined and considered while making a driving decision. Additionally, if the ride should be a little lag, most likely less than a few milliseconds between the signal and the actual action, such as a steering wheel rotation or the emergency stop or brake. Of course, these latency measurements and requirements can be fulfilled if and only if the computing capacity is located inside the car. Cloud computing can guarantee such high speeds because of the limited network availability and capacity or broad width and speed. Of course, while the data makes the round trip from the car to the cloud, an accident may already have happened. This is a crucial point to understand in our discussion. Decisioning in edge computing is fast and latencies are negligible. Furthermore, Tesla can also use the central cloud for publishing some aggregated metrics or telemetry events for analytics, trend analysis or advanced AI, but these cases don't require low latencies and can be published in batches or in packets without any risks. Well, not only self-driving cars are benefiting from edge computing. Let's look at oil derricks. Oil production is a complex and, of course, multi-stage process that also produces a lot of metrics and events. Some events are have a major priority and should be processed without any major latencies. Well, now imagine a valve that is controlled by a pressure value in a pipeline. If the pressure is high and the valve must be opened, while if the pressure decreases, the valve should be closed. The pressure is continuously measured by a sensor at the valve control logic and both are located somewhere in Ohio and the processing cloud is in Utah and then controller sends the pressure value to the cloud via a network that means that the signals are transferred by the means of some wire and that means that it takes some time to complete to be transferred to the destination point. And of course, since we are talking about some large road trips, it could probably take some milliseconds. Well, let's say 
it took 100 milliseconds to reach Ohio from Yuda. Well, at the next step, the code computes a decision and it takes 50 milliseconds for extra 100 milliseconds to send the final decision back to, to the valve, to the place where the valve is located. And it will take an additional 100 milliseconds. Finally, it took 250 milliseconds in total. Well, at a glance, it seems to be relatively low latency. But in the period, in these 250 milliseconds, when the data making this round trip from Utah to Ohio and back, the pipeline may have reached a critical value of pressure or pressure value became too high. It came far beyond the possible threshold and that led to some kind of explosion. That's why the valve computing and all the decisioning that lies between the valve and the final decision should be provided at the edge. That means so close to the valve as it possible. The valve looks like uh, some minor thing that can generate a lot of data. How many data can be generated by a single valve located in an, some oil derrick or in some factory? Well, I guess it's not, not more than a few megabytes or a few hundred of megabytes a day. But how much data is generated in different use cases? Let's talk about the civil airplanes. A civil airplane generates at least 5 terabytes of data per day. A self-driving car, a Tesla, generates approximately 4 terabytes data per day. And a modern factory overall generates at least 2 petabytes data a day. It's impressive. No any cloud or no any infrastructure can provide such traffic for transferring and a low latency processing of such large amount of data daily. That's why we use edge computing and that's why the edge computing comes to the stage. So much data is a nice basis or foundation for AI or artificial intelligence. You probably heard that machine learning became a major point in modern IT and now it takes almost any aspect of our lives. And another example is the usage of AI to make some kind of predictions, classification and recognition tasks. Today most of the industry giants such as Google, IBM and Amazon offer cloud computing as a source, AI-based services, which are a vision recognition services that can receive images and maybe videos and return a cognitive response. Most of the services rely on neural networks. Neural networks are the things that should be pre-trained on some central places. That means a central service. In edge computing, a neural network is usually still trained on a central data server because the process requires a lot of computational power. Once the model is pre-trained and the training process is completed, we can copy the AI neural network to the edge server. And after that, we don't need to transfer video streams or pictures or photos to the cloud. This, of course, improves latencies and decreases the demands on the network because in most cases, the network is crucial. 
the same approach is applicable for edge processing of audio, sensor measurements and decisioning. Well, now we've understood and now it's clear that the edge computing is a vital scene in our everyday lives and in almost any IoT architectural landscapes. What are these devices that can be used as edge servers or edge server clusters? Edge computing devices are defined by their locations but not their sizes or computing power. The edge computing device may be a real big computing server or it may be a single board small sized device and despite their modest sizes some types of single board servers may even use GPU acceleration I mean QD GPU cores and it makes them a good choice for AI computer vision and visual recognition tasks. Raspberry Pi, for example, is a good regular extendable edge single board device with a good performance and extendable interfaces. So you probably can connect anything to the Raspberry and use it as a single board edge computing server or even create a kind of a computing cluster as close to the edge devices, to the sensors, to the cameras, to the mics or audio traffic circles as it possible and it pushes the industry towards a new step or stage of computing. So it was a first part of the series that related to the edge computing and today we have observed uh, basics of edge computing, what edge computing is in, in a nutshell and why it's important to understand the edge computing today. In the next part we will look at the concrete examples can create architectural patterns, can create servers and can create technology that makes the edge computing a vital and evolving technology today. Thank you, have a nice day, bye.